And welcome to the show. How you guys doing this morning? Man, I woke up with the biggest surprise. I'll tell you about that in a second. First, I want to thank Dom for the donation. You rock, buddy, man. I really appreciate it. Dom is a long distance rider. He does a lot of long distance stuff on that Harley, baby. Uh, but he's been with us for a long time. We really uh, appreciate the support of the show. All that goes into the new radio station. Again, thanks, Dom. You rock and roll. Also, I want to give Josh a big thanks for the hat, man. Look at that sucker, man. That's Kush, baby. Kush. Love that hat. Love that hat. Uh, yeah, I get a lot of people that send me hats. I wear them on uh, the show and stuff. Uh, I only wear snapbacks. So, <laughs> just a hint if you want to send one. But anyway, oh my goodness gracious. As Johnny Five would say, goodness gracious. You know that Hindu guy? Uh... Here's a story, and I got a picture of it on my Instagram. And so if you're not over on my Instagram, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. But, you know, I was out there. I was getting, you know, buzzed now. I was talking buzzed. You know, I got so damn high that I went above God and was looking down saying, how you doing? He's like, hey, get back here. Anyway, there was a huge, huge storm in northern Illinois. And, you know, I like watching the storms. But the problem was this. I was really high when I was doing this. Uh, you know, I was doing like that for, uh, Forrest Gump thing, man, with uh, the lieutenant up in that thing, you know, looking up there, all that stuff. Anyway, you know, sitting on the front porch under the awning. And next thing you know, I'm just sitting there, being, you know, and I'm not doing nothing. The lightning strikes. Yes, it took down the tree right in front of me. And I'm sitting here. Whoa, dude. Here, my dumb ass high, and this happens. And it was like, it, it blinds you for a second, but it took down my damn tree. It didn't hit the house, you know. Again, I got pictures up there. So today, you know, I was kind of upset. I was like, you, you struck my tree. What the hell's wrong with you? That ain't cool. And especially when I'm high, you killed my buzz. That is the worst buzz killer that I can imagine right there. And, you know, after the initial wow, dude, it was like, you get pissed. <laughs> I love that tree. It was my shade tree. So, called out the freaking army today and they cut my tree down. So sad, man. Sad state of affairs. It took my tree. Uh, but, you know, I was the lucky one. Uh, I think Forreston got hit really bad. They actually closed that town down. Uh, that storm was something else, man. It was like freaking, uh, I was like thinking I was like in Florida. And it was a hurricane. That's how bad the winds were up here. And here's my dumb ass out there sitting and watching it. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, oh, uh, Hollywood don't do smart things at some point in time, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I, I'm trying to be reasonable here, you know, that was not reasonable of what I did, but I like watching the damn rain and the thunderstorm, I just didn't think it was going to get that damn bad, and I didn't think the old man upstairs was going to send me a warning with that bolt of lightning. Unreal. Take a uh look at the picture over on Instagram, man. That sucker just shot right down. Blackity black it was. Uh, we got some good news today. Good news. I've been doing a lot of bad news lately, so I wanted to dedicate a show to the clubs that are doing good. You know, doing the rallies and doing all that kind of good jive. So we're going to get into that. And I think it's going to be, a, you know, a different change of pace, different change of pace. Then, you know, well, wait a second. I do have a story from over in Australia. You know, our guys over there and <laughs> our bikers, you know, they act in a fool again over there. So, yeah, they're in the paper for some uh, bad stuff. And it even has a video of uh, uh, a guy getting busted up and all kinds of goodies that they got. You guys need to learn over there to use fake compartments. My God, I thought you guys would know that, man. Anywhere in a house, you got to have some fake compartments. If you're doing some stuff, that's only reasonable. So, anyway, we're going to get into the show. Uh... 
you know, I just wanted to tell that story. Usually I have a long monologue and stuff. Uh, but, you know, maybe uh, my final thoughts that we'll talk a little bit more. So let's get this show on the road. Let's get to some biker news, baby. Okay, here we go. KSN TV. Rock and roll. Here it is. Our first up today. Let's take a listen. Well, schools across the state of Texas are just about ready to welcome kids back to campus. And amidst the, these trying times, the local one local group is helping parents and school districts make sure their students have all the supplies they need. Nikki Latarulo has this story. We want to donate to Grosbeck ISD $1,250 from our backpack and school supply drive from July the 25th. The Los Parados Motorcycle Club has been helping out parents and school districts for the past four to five years. And this year, they fundraised enough money to give $1,250 to both Mart and Grosbeck ISD. The money that we give to the schools, we do specify is to be used for the children in their district that can't afford the backpacks or the school supplies. Los Parados held a school supply drive at the end of July where they collected enough supplies to fill 22 backpacks for kids in Limestone and McLennan counties, each worth around $100. In this time and era we're in right now, where so many people are unemployed, these families did not have $300 to send their children to school. Today, members of Grosbeck and Mart ISD were present to receive the checks and couldn't express enough how much this means to them. We got a lot of, you know, socio uh, disadvantaged kids and, and uh, this $1,250 that they donated, it's going to be, it's going for a good cause. And, you know, a lot of people right now with this right pandemic on. going on, it's definitely going to help out. Amy Stone, the principal of Mart Elementary School, said gestures like this show the strength of the community. We consider all of our community, including Dude, uh, this Los Parados principal. Motorcycle Club. They're part of the Panther family and uh, we all support each other during this hard time. The club was formed 12 years ago and holds annual food, toy and school supply drives to go hand in hand with their mission statement. It's all about the children. Nikki Latarulo, Six News. That is, you know, that is awesome right there. Uh, you know, the only thing that makes me upset a little bit here, and I'll tell you why. You put all that money to register your kids. They get all kinds of money from the state, the property taxes and all that, and they still want you to pay $300 to send your kid to school. That is a scam. But one thing, and I just got to bring it up when I seen this video, man, I'd not mess with that broad. I would have messed with her. You know, I'm one of them guys, you know, I think, you know, women, you know, property patches, stuff like that. But that one right there, she probably whooped my ass. You know, I'm going to shut up about this stuff now. There's some women out there whoop my ass. <laughs> Jesus. You know, stay away. She'll whoop your ass. But uh, that's some uh, great stuff that they uh, did. They did a supply drive for uh, schools for kids that were disadvantaged. And, yeah, that's not uh, the stuff we get to hear about much. Uh, Besides that, you know, you always get the freaking cops out there t saying that's nothing but gangs. Hey, you Leo's going to say they're a gang now? I'm just wondering because they were wearing support patches and stuff. Uh, so does that make them a gang? Uh, I'd tell them, uh, you know, tell the principal that. Boy, she was hot, though, man. Why is it when I was in school, the teachers weren't so damn hot, man, but nowadays they hot. And then you see all these stories about teachers, you know, doing some stuff with their, you know, the students, and they go run their mouths. It's like, dude, shut up. You know, you're, you're 17 years old. You just got a Hummer from the teacher. You're going to go cry about it, you dummy? Anyway. Ensley Biker Club says members not to blame for deadly shooting. Uh, and this again is a, a, a video one, and I actually love it when clubs come out and give their side of the story because it's not done much anymore. It really isn't. Let's take a look. After being thrust into reports of a weekend shooting, the Birmingham chapter of the number one stun is Biker Club is firing back. Saturday night, police say six people were shot at the club's address on 18th Street in Ensley. But their business manager says the gunfire started nearly a block away. It was not in front of our club. It was not inside our club. Uh, and, and no member of our club was actually a shooter, an active shooter. An off-duty Birmingham police officer who Esquire says is not one of their members was among those injured. 
but he says a female member of their Jacksonville chapter was hit three times by stray bullets. We enlist the public's prayers as well because she believes she may even be paralyzed. She oh, has no feelings from the waist affairs. down. Uh, she was shot through her kidneys and spleen. The group was celebrating its 12th anniversary this weekend and held a Stop the Violence ride only hours before the shooting. We have people in the club who are doctors, lawyers, Birmingham police officers, firefighters, nurses, you name it, you know, so uh, we just kind of felt like we got the short end of the stick on this one and we wanted to make sure that the public knew that this isn't how we operate. Details about who shot who and if anyone will be charged will have to wait until the end of the state's investigation. In See, this is the same situation that the ice cold uh, riders found themselves in that we just did in a couple segments ago where the news, they pinned it on the motorcycle club because it happened right in front of theirs. But again, they used the club's address in this story. Now that's twice that this has happened in two different states. What kind of reporting is that? And it's awesome that the clubs came out and said, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, wait a second here. You know, we already get a bad name from the general population. We didn't do this. Our members weren't involved in this. But you know what's funny? Leo gives that address and they don't come out with a retraction. They just let this go. They stoke the fire is what these people do. And I'll talk about that in my final thoughts. Now let's go over to Australia where you acting a fool again, guys. You acting a fool. Let me read it then we'll go through the, you know, the uh, film here. Detectives from Southeast Region's Task Force Maxima. They got all these pretty names for these task force over there. Raptor and all that stuff. Uh, State Crime uh, Command have charged a man linked to an outlaw motorcycle club with drug and weapon offenses following the execution of a search warrant at Sunbird Avenue and Paradise Point this morning. Hmm. During a search of the resident, police located two handguns, a silencer, two knuckle dusters. Man, I wish I still had my old knuckle dusters. It's hard to get the damn things now. Uh, 12400 in cash and quantities of cocaine, MDMA, and cannabis. Leave the 420 alone. My God. But 12400 I'd be pissed again. This is reason why you need hidden compartments, boys. The last one got 50000 plus all kinds of stuff taken. Oh, I'd be pissed. Uh, a 44-year-old man, an alleged associate of the Mongols OMCG. Now, this is what I hate. This is an alleged associate, but they're using the Mongols' name to get the story out in the public. Why? Because over there, they get more money in their budgets, kind of like they do here in the United States. But was he a member? No. So why even throw the Mongols under the bus? Has been charged with 14 offenses, including four counts of possession of dangerous drugs and one count. Why is 420 dangerous? You know what? There's never been a documented case of an overdose on a weed. It's Mary Jane. She don't do that to you. But you throw it under the bus like it's a bad thing. Huh. And it actually got a lot of health, uh, medicinal qualities. I can tell you this. It helped with the seizures. Uh, possessions of things used in a crime, possession of proceeds of crime, and an unlawful possession of Category H weapon, handguns. <laughs> That's right, you guys gave up your right to arms back in the 90s. I bet you're feeling like a bunch of slucks now. Uh, category uh, R weapon silencer, explosives, uh, category M weapon, uh, that's knuckle dusters and push knife, and restrictum item baton. Man, you got some mad ass laws over there. He has been reprimanded to appear at Southport Magistrates Court tomorrow. Hey, do you guys wear the wigs over there still, the lawyers and the judges? Hey, somebody let me know about that, or is that only England still? Uh, quote, these are serious offenses which pose a significant threat to the community and we will take every opportunity to disrupt this sort of activity which brings nothing but harm to our society. Detective Senior Sergeant Troy Lindham of Tax Force Maxima said. 
Okay, let's take a look here. What do they have to say? Oh, there we go. We got the... They're busting in right now. <laughs> they actually got the camera, too. Hey, looks like a little cozy, you know, grill room. Ah, uh, they're in there going through all this stuff right now. I bet you wish that you had a concealed compartment. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? You know, instead you got it into a, a, a box in a closet. Ooh, nice. Nice, nice, nice that freaking piece was. Oh, yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about right there. Oh, yeah. Even the cops liking that one. <laughs> oh, busted. Ah, uh, sucks. Uh, 12500 in cash. My God, I'd be pissed, whoever was your fronter. Anyway, let's go to uh, the East Oregon. Uh, a motorcycle club is contesting a lawsuit narrative. This by Antonio Sierra. And this has to do with the Brotherhood United Motorcycle Association. When Riven Fennin filed a $1.5 million lawsuit over injuries he received at a fight at Pendleton Bike Week in 2018, he didn't just sue the Bike Week organization, but also the event's private security and beverage supplier. He's out for money. This schluck, yeah, he's got a you know a couple dotted eyes, busted up nose. Don't go to a biker event talking stupid is what I say. The lawsuit didn't include the Brotherhood United Motorcycle Association, one of the groups Fennin identified as being behind his beating. Even, well, you, you look like a schluck. Why wouldn't they beat you up? You're like one of them freaking morons in high school. That's what it is. You're mad because you got your ass whooped. Uh, even as it does include then Brotherhood United President Al Rafferty. Well, he dotted your eyes. Uh, officials from Brotherhood United have said that Rafferty is no longer a member of their club and are disputing Fedden's account of their role in the incident. Quote, we took care of Fedden, Alex Laughlin, an Oregon sergeant in arms for Brotherhood United, said in an interview, we weren't part of the altercation. Well, wait a second here. Now you got me freaking all confused and you're going to get me going now. Why was, is he no longer the president of the club? Because well, he knocked the hell out of somebody and you're just going to kick him to the curve? Sometimes, you know, it, it really, I don't know, man. I have to read a little more into this and I'll give you my thoughts on this. Uh, but saying we took care of Fennin, sergeant at arms. Whatever. According to Fennin's lawsuit, members of the Brotherhood United and the Badgers MC Brotherhood were acting as security guards to the, a VIP area of the Pendleton Bike Week concert when they started antagonizing him as he tried to enter with a VIP pass. The lawsuit states that the bikers eventually started hitting him before he was able to escape under a trailer and tend to his wounds in a Pendleton Convention Center bathroom. Man, get out of there. They're not just going to start popping on you if you're not doing nothing. In the complaint, Fennin's counsel claims Pendleton Bike Week was negligent huh, in protecting him from injury and it is now sinking more than $1.5 million for his medical bills, economic losses, and the pain and trauma for the event. Lofton, the Brotherhood United member, said he was one of the, as many as 15 club members at the event who were there to help provide security at Pendleton Bike Week's vendor area. Lofton said Brotherhood United members were not involved in the fight with Fennin and the group didn't get involved until Fennin went to the bathroom. A former military medic, Lofton said he and other club members with emergency medical experience were contacted to help treat Fennin's injuries in the bathroom. During that time, Lofton said he tried appealing to a Rover security staff member to bring an ambulance, but he was rebuffed. You puss. Fennin eventually went to the hospital and the police arrived to investigate the incident, although authorities were frustrated with the lack of cooperation from Rafferty and some of the other bikers on the scene for his part, Lofton said he couldn't offer much information to the police on what happened before he arrived. Rafferty left the Brotherhood United shortly after Bike Week and only a handful of Brotherhood members who worked the 2018 event remain with the club. 
Brotherhood United has long disputed their involvement in Fennin's beating and often said the recent report about the lawsuit made the group want to set the record straight, which is cool, which is cool. You need to do that. You know, I just don't like that one statement, you know, the sergeant at arms, we got rid of him. Well, it looks like you got rid of a lot of freaking members, doesn't it? <laughs> the club is also a non-profit organization that works with veterans, which is great, and does charity work around the state including an instance in 2019 where they delivered Christmas presents to Pendleton, uh, a Pendleton family in need. Uh, when the contacted Rover Security President Jacob Turner also cast his company role in the fight in a more positive light, uh, quote, if we haven't stepped in, he could have gotten worse than severe injuries. Uh, you know what? It's funny. This don't make no sense here. No biker is going to whoop your ass unless you do something to him. And that's what I believe he did. You know, this guy on the left-hand side right there, he, you know, he kind of got bumped up a little bit. You know, you don't look like a biker. What are you doing at the freaking event but running your mouth? That's all I have to say on that. But, uh, you know, I'll talk about that brotherhood thing. That, that comment was like, what? Okay, let's go to Mountain Jackpot News. Give me some gold, baby. Despite no veterans rally, POW MIA recognition biker ride ready to roll through Teller. Rock and roll. Uh, this had to do with uh, run and stuff about a week ago. Cripple Creek's uh, biggest and most popular festival, the Salute to the American Veterans Rally, was recently canceled by the city council, citing major safety concerns due to the coronavirus pandemic. Here's another one where the city's involved. What the hell, guys, man? You know, I, it used to be you did your own thing. Now you got to get the city. Don't get the city involved. But according to the event's website, the 2020 POW MIA recognition ride will go on as scheduled. Rock and roll. The website proclaims the Veterans Rally in Cripple Creek has been canceled. What this means is there will be no vendors, bands, beer garden, food, ceremonies on the streets in Cripple Creek. Well, you know, go support your local strip clubs is what I'm saying then. We will, however, be honoring our uh, American veterans and our troops with several activities, including the 33rd Annual POW MIA Recognition Ride, the R.E.D. Friday T-shirt giveaway, the dedication of a plaque to a fallen service member at our memorial, and more. Uh, well, actually, it's going to be the 28th uh, uh, year that this has happened, the Salute Rally. Uh, according to Jim Weir, the president of the Promotions, which has organized the event during the last several decades, quote, when the rally was canceled, there was many requests and movement by the veteran con uh, community to continue the ride. In an interview last week, the Pro Promotions president stressed the ride is a separate entity from the rally. We are said, I or my crew haven't been operating the ride for probably 25 years. Uh, the veteran uh, ride is organized by uh, the Brotherhood of Veterans, the Colorado Patriot Guard, rock on, uh, the Colorado American Legion Riders, rock on, and uh, the Kansas American Legion Riders. Uh, Weir stated his group pro promotion operated in Cripple uh, Creek to help park the riders and to help the events that normally would take place if, had they not been canceled. So, good stuff right there, good stuff. Actually, we got the date. I thought it happened already, but it's, uh, let's see here. It takes place, the recognition ride, uh, Saturday, August 22nd. Uh, participants in the ride will be able to join in on what Weir calls R.E.D. Friday. According to the website, we will be giving away 800 R.E.D. Friday t-shirts. Uh, August 21st at 11 a.m. in Woodland Park, Colorado. Join them at Bergstrom's Park downtown, just across the uh, Ute Inn. One shirt per person. Additional shirts are $10 each, and proceeds benefit a uh, local veteran in need. Rock and roll. So that's going to be coming up. Uh, again, I thought it was uh, already done, but it is not my fault. Uh, so get out if you're out that way get into involved in this now let's go to Corey Griff's wall of shame baby 
New tonight, the officer at the center of a controversial arrest in La Mesa is no longer working for the department, according to the city. Fox 5 Not in these times. Get live in La Mesa with what we're learning. Tasha. Kathleen in the city did not clarify whether that officer resigned or was terminated, but tonight we can confirm he no longer works for the city. Stop touching me. Okay, I already talked. Okay, you're still, stop you're touching still me. All right, that's awesome. Stop okay, touching me. Great. Stop touching me. Stop touching me. Okay. It's been about two and a half months since this controversial arrest in La Mesa involving 23 year old Amari Johnson. Johnson was waiting for his friends near the Grossmont train station when he was initially he contacted him. by officers for smoking in public. You would not see any smoke, marijuana, or me, um, there any proof of me having that. Body cam video showed some of the May 27th interaction where Johnson was arrested and charged with suspicion of assault on an officer and resisting the officer. The officer seen in the video identified as Matt Dadges, initially placed on administrative leave while the department investigated the incident. Friday, the city of La Mesa released a brief statement saying Dadges is no longer employed by the city in any capacity. Charges against Johnson were dropped, but he has filed a lawsuit against the city and several members of the police department. Of course he has. And the police department said it would not be commenting any further than that brief statement released by the city. We also tried getting a hold of Johnson's lawyer this evening to see if he had any comment. He did not return our request in time for this story to air, but we do know he acknowledged the news on social media. Reporting live in La Mesa tonight, Kasha. Okay, I have to say something here. The guy lunged at dude. He lunged at him. You just see it in the freaking video. See, this is the problem with you freaking liberals. You go and fire these people. And, hey, I don't support Leo. But they got a job to do. You know, it's always been bikers on one side, Leo on the other, and it was their job to catch us if we were doing something bad. Well, anyway, looking at the video, you're firing everybody. And you wonder why crime's skyrocketing because you're giving these people a reason to do it. You guys are schlucks, man. Schlucks. But let's go to my final thoughts on some stuff. Oh boy, do I got some now. Carrie here from Beggar Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Okay, Bagger Syndicate Cycles, baby. Got a bunch of their hats. Great quality snapbacks, man. Check them out. Uh, the last story with the cop stuff. You know, I want to give my uh, view on that. Just like what happened in Chicago, what happened in Portland, what's happened in, uh, in California, which, by the way, Dum Dum Biden just picked Camelia Harris from California as his VP pick. We'll talk about that in a minute. You know, I couldn't let that one go. Anyway, they are taking away so much that the cops can do to quell the violence in these cities. And they wonder why crime's through the freaking roof. It was funny, today, uh, Beetlejuice, the Chicago mayor, that she ugly boy. Woo! Woo! No wonder she's like that. You know, she's one of these. Yes. Tinkerbell. Anyway, uh... They let people out with felony accounts, man. You know, which, hey, if you're doing the, you know, if you're a criminal, that's cool. Uh, but anyway, how do you expect to stop the violence? You're not. Because it's the cops you're getting, are the ones getting fired. Now, I do admit, they're schlucks. They do stupid stuff. We feature them on the wall of shame all the time. And the reason why we do it is... Because they always say clubs are gang members. So I like to point out, well, you guys got the same thing going on. So does that make you a gang? You know what I mean. But watching that video, you can see the guy lunged forward. And all the cop did was put him on his ass and put the cuffs on. But now all of a sudden that's excessive force? Are you kidding me?
There was nothing excessive about that. Somebody lean, lunges towards you. What do you? What are you gonna do if somebody lunges towards you? You're gonna dot their eye. Well, all the cop did was, you know, push him down to the, and he didn't even push him that hard. Put him to the, you know, that uh, concrete uh, stoop, and put his hands behind his back. That's all he did. He wasn't a jerk about it. But it being California. And the tree huggers out there, they kicked them off the force for that. That's sad state of affairs right now. It's funny. I had one of them Tinkerbell's uh, tree huggers. Uh, you should stick to biker news, your right wing conspiracies. Probably one, as a Generation z -er. And two, you have the chance to come debate your positions with me. On the madhouse. I'll bring you on. I always bring on people that want to debate me. But again, like everybody's found out, I'll bring the facts and I'll bring the jackhammer. I don't do softball debates. I'm not I'm just not that kind of guy. If you and I even asked, okay, well, educate us all, since we're stupid. Didn't give any points that none whatsoever. Okay, I'll debate it. Bring some facts with you, baby. Because if you don't, I'm going to make you look stupid. And I'll enjoy doing it. But anyway, I think that's the reason why the violence ain't going to stop. The protest ain't going to stop. Is because they just let them do whatever the hell they want. Sickening uh, state of affairs. Uh, going to that one story, uh, the Stunna's MC... That is the second story again within a week that's happened to a motorcycle club. They report a shooting, people go down, and the next thing you know, the cops give the address of the club, and the general citizenry thinks it's the MC that was involved in the shooting. If you don't, if you can't. If that ain't propaganda, something wrong with me. That is selling a story for the media, for one. Two, that is, uh, you know, puffing up the budget for the cops. Lying isn't right, man. And putting people's lives in danger ain't in light, uh, right either. Ice cold riders... They do a lot for the community up there, even though it's colder than hell up in North Dakota. It's cold up there. And I cry and whine about it here in Illinois, but it's cold up there, man. It's like Alaska cold up there. Maybe because they don't got a lot of buildings. I have no idea, but it's cold. You need to have your uh, skis ready if you want to walk around up there. But uh, anyway, they do a lot of community service. And for... The cops to do that while well, it was in front of your clubhouse, so we gave that. That ain't right. And we interviewed him. We interviewed Pac from uh, the Ice Cold Riders, and he gave their side of the story, which I love it now. A lot of clubs are moving to do that, and that is freaking awesome. Because it puts everybody on notice, hey, you can't do this to us no more. We're tired of it. We're tired of looking like the bad guys because the cops want a headline for their budget. Great stuff. Going overseas to, uh... <laughs> they playing fools over there, man. No, I have, you know, a special place in my heart for the bike geese, okay? They some hardcore gangsters over there. I got, you know, I got to admit, they're hardcore gangsters, man. They're doing, like, right now and what happened in the United States in the 60s and 70s where there's no playing around. Uh, but... Gotta get some stash houses, man. You never keep the stuff in your house. And if you do, you better have some trap doors or bury that crap somewhere. Because you're losing a lot of money, man. 12-5. Guarantee. They're either going to get a bounty off of that, the cops. Or they spend it right now on a bunch of strippers. And, you know, they're putting that stuff in the back of their trunk, selling it uh, out the door. I can guarantee that. Uh, but the, the pistol they took is beautiful, man. Uh, you know, I just feel sad for you guys out in Australia because you gave up your gun rights and uh, 
the 90s, yeah, I get it, a mass shooting, but you overreacted, and now, even in Canada, I don't even think you can have a handgun up there, you know, I get it, you know, let's have a shotgun, yeah, a shotgun can put somebody down real quick, but not at, you know, long distances, and a, a shotgun you can't carry around on you, you can't put that in a holster, <laughs> uh -uh. so, I kind of feel sorry for you guys, and that's why it's important here in the United States to see what's going on, because they do not like the Second Amendment here in the United States, them lefty tree huggers. You actually got New York trying to sue the NRA out of existence. It's a sad state of affairs right now in this country, but, you know, I kind of perked up because <laughs> Camelia Harris, really? <laughs> You just handed the election to us because nobody's going to vote for her. One, she's not uh, uh, a woman of color. She's Asian. She acts like she's black, but none of them are black. She ain't black. And two, people have seen that brought in action, man. Uh, she was uh, big with prosecuting people out in L.A., and yeah, by the way, she's from California, and all you have to do on a commercial with her is 10 cities, man. Skid Rows. That's all that's out there any damn way. Just show that. That's what she was in charge of. If you elect these dummies, this is what the country's going to become. So I was kind of happy when he announced that, uh, you know, the, the commercial from... Uh, the Trump Pence team it was hilarious. You gotta see that. Uh it was funny as hell. Phony Camellia, he's calling her, man. He's always got these nicknames. Even though, you know, Sleepy Joe I don't like. He could they should have called him China Joe. Uh, you know, that would have stuck more. But uh yeah, that's his VP pick now. <laughs> uh the motorcycle club uh contests the lawsuit narrative, uh the Brotherhood United MA. Uh, I really don't get it. I don't. You know, you've seen how the sergeant at arms talked about a former uh, club president. Well, we got rid of him. Why? Okay, now that you brought it out in the news, why? Because the dude punched somebody, probably. See, that's why with family clubs and MAs, I just don't get it. You know, there's some good MAs out there, man, some hardcore ones. But. The family club deal, uh, for one, I don't understand why family clubs are wearing a three-piece patch. you think they'd be wearing a single patch. Now I know the Brotherhood uh, United one wears a single patch. Maybe that just don't mean anything any damn more, but I just can't see a family club wearing three pieces because you got to defend that stuff. And a lot of these clubs have women in it. Which, you know, from the first story, man, I wouldn't screw with her. She whoop all our asses. But the other women are usually not like that. So, I never understood the premise of a three-piece. And maybe you guys can educate me on this. Why they would be letting a woman wear that. Especially if you go in a bar and somebody comes up and you got to defend your colors. I don't think she's going to do it. You know, I don't see if they got that many people like this one in there. But... To throw that out in the media, that was condescending and a bunch of crap. Now, if I'm wrong, you guys are invited to come on the show. Let me know why I'm wrong. But to have your sergeant at arms talk about a, a former brother or you know, he's probably not a brother in the first. That's why I don't like calling anybody brother. Because at the first sign of trouble, everybody's an asshole. Oh, he's not my brother anymore. Well, then why didn't you call him that? You know what I mean, guys? It, it, it just gets kind of freaking stupid sometimes. And that story really, really brought it home today, man, on that one. Uh, but with uh, Beetlejuice in Chicago, I wanted to talk about that again because, you know, you had that tree hugger come out and say, you you know, you're a right-wing conspiracist. No, it happens to be, I don't watch CNN, MSNBC, or uh, Facebook, uh, bullcrap, uh, or Fox News. You know, I'll look at all of them to see what they're saying, and you can see right through what a lot of them are doing. No, actually, I'm one of them people that I guess ain't uh, intelligent and goes to, uh, you know, creators for the news. You know, I like Tim Pool, I like Joe Rogan, uh, you know, 
I like local stuff because the local stuff usually is right on T where they don't try to spin everything into a talk show type of deal. But I really like to see what this guy has to say. Why my views on what happened in the Chicago area with, you know, them driving right through a Tesla freaking uh, showroom or destroying one of the best things in Chicago has, the mile. Why I'm wrong and why that's conspiracy. Why I'm being spoon fed. You know, I'm really hard to be spoon fed. So I'm really interested to see what he has to say. My first question is going to be, okay, you got a, you know, you got an election coming up. And I'm from Chicago, by the way. I grew up, <laughs> born and bred, grew up, every damn thing there. Uh, it was only in the last couple of years I left. But I've been there all my damn life and know the politics there. You tell me why we should have mail-in voting. If you can go out there and protest like a bunch of dummies. You tell me why. Give me a logical reason. Especially when all over the country these ballots. There was ballots from Virginia that ended up in freaking Maine. Are you kidding me? I'm going to do this for a presidential election. And we're going to continue living through leftist policies, right? Look at California. They said if Trump wins, you know, because they had these freaking war room deals, you know, the West should succeed. Well, California, yeah. Oregon, Washington, bye-bye, see you later. See how you defend yourselves. See, they don't think about that kind of stuff. We're a civil war. You guys try to take all the guns away, guess who has them? Are you that dumb? But that's the way them people think. So, dumb dumb. He gets Camelia Harrison as his running mate. What has she done besides having uh, not having a pecker between her legs? Because that's the left's big thing. And she's not of color. I would uh, reckon to say that didn't work the last time Obama was around, did it? Because he didn't do nothing for the black community. Just, you know, my observations there, man. But what was your thoughts? You know, I'm going to swing back around here. What was your thoughts about that MA throwing an ex-president under the bus? I contend that's the reason why a lot of people get a bad taste in their mouths about motorcycle clubs, MAs, RCs, all that stuff. That's why you get a lot of people that are more independent nowadays than joining something. That ain't real brotherhood right there. No, he should have freaking came out and said nothing, nothing about the ex-president. But boy, as soon as he did, the media was all over that. That's because they believe in a divide and conquer type of deal. Let me know your thoughts on the show really appreciate uh, the support over on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the like button, uh, pound rock on, and of course, all the support on the radio is just badass, man. I love you guys for that one. HarleyLiberty.com for your daily biker news, and the conversations that have been happening uh, on the premieres every day on uh, YouTube and Facebook has been awesome. You can see a lot of debate going on, so don't forget to catch us live, man. With that, I will talk to you guys later. Get high, baby. I said goodbye, <laughs> vamoose, adios, ciao, so long. Get your so you want to know how to support the show, go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now rock on don't forget to go over to harleyliberty.com get all your motorcycle club news what's happening in the scene we have a new article or articles every single day over at harleyliberty.com and don't forget the sister site bikerlifestylemagazine.com if you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news motorcycle rallies and bikers helping the community 
motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BaggerSyndicateCycles.com. Your show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news.